Okay, so in this video we are going to go through two optimization examples. Both of these involve rectangular areas. What's different is just what we are trying to optimize. So for our first example, let's say you are building an outdoor enclosure for your chickens and it's attached to the existing coop. You have 12 chickens and you'd like the enclosure to have enough space so each chicken has 9 square feet of room. You also want to divide the space into two sections. So, what dimensions will require the least amount of fencing? Okay, so we have a space, it's attached by one side to a chicken coop, and it needs to be a certain area to accommodate to have enough space for each of the chickens. And it's gonna have a divider down the middle. We're gonna follow our same steps that we always do with optimization problems. First, I'm gonna draw a picture and choose some variables to represent the different components. So we have a chicken coop on one side, and then we have a rectangular enclosure attached to it. It also has a divider in the middle. I'm just choosing x and y as my variables here. Something to note is that if x is the length of the divider, it's also the length of the sides, and then I'm just going to call that whole bottom length y. We're hoping to find the dimensions at the end, and the dimensions are just the length and the width, so I'm just going to label these as length and width, basically, y and x. Then our next step is to translate the situation into math. So I have two things happening. I have an area and I have a perimeter. The area has a specific amount that it needs to be. We have 12 chickens and we need to have nine square feet for each. So I'm gonna do 12 times nine, and that needs to equal the area. X times Y is the area of our rectangle here. So 12 times nine is 108, and I have 108 equals X, Y for my area. Then for my perimeter, this is the amount of fence I'm going to need. So I have one side that's a length of y, and then I actually have three sides that are an x length. So we have the outsides and that inside divider. So my perimeter is equal to y plus 3x, and I'm giving it that name of p, p equals, just so I have something to call it as I go through my work. As part of this step, we label which equation is the constraint and which equation is the objective. We are constrained by the amount of space we need. We need a space of 108 square feet, so that is our constraint equation. And our objective equation is the perimeter, since we're trying to minimize the amount of fence or materials that we need. For our third step, we substitute the constraint into the objective. Remember, our whole goal is to take the derivative of the objective equation. For us, that's the perimeter. We're gonna take the derivative, find the critical point that corresponds to the minimum. So in order to take its derivative, we'd like to have only one variable going on. So I'm going to solve the constraint for y. You could solve it for x if you wanted. I just like to solve for y, especially since y is just on its own here, whereas the 3x has a 3 attached to it. So I divide and I get y equals 108 over x. And I'll just go ahead and rewrite it as 108x to the negative 1, since I know I'm going to need its derivative at some point. Then I substitute this in to my perimeter, my objective equation for y. So I have that p equals 108 x to the negative 1 plus 3 x. Now we can move on to the step where we apply the first derivative test to this objective equation. So p prime, the derivative of p, is equal to negative 108 x to the negative 2 plus 3. Those are just some power rules there. Now I'm going to set this derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. So as I write it equal to 0, I'm just going to bring that x to the negative 2 into the denominator so that it's a positive 2. Then as part of my steps to solve for x, I'll move the 108 over x squared over to the left hand side. Then I can multiply by x squared, so I have 108 equals 3x squared. Then I can divide by 3. I'm getting x squared is equal to 36. And to solve for x, I just need to take the plus or minus square root. So I'm getting the plus or minus 6. But since this is a real world situation, we can't have a negative x value. We can't have a negative length on our chicken coop. So I'm just going to take the positive value. So x equals 6 is our critical number that we are hoping corresponds to the minimum for the perimeter. Now truthfully, you can probably stop at this point and say like, yeah, that's my minimum. But it's always good just to check and make sure. So I'll plug in some test points into the derivative around that point 6. So I'm choosing 1 and 10. When I plug in 1 into the derivative, I'm getting negative 105. That's a negative. And when I plug in 10, I'm getting a yucky fraction that comes out to be 1.92. But the important part is that it's positive. 
So the derivative is changing from negative to positive, meaning 6 is indeed a minimum. So we know that x equals 6 corresponds to a minimum for our perimeter. We just need both dimensions since we need to know the dimensions of this chicken coop, so we need to solve for the other variable. We have one side that's 6, we need the other length. So I know that y is equal to 108 over x, x is 6, so I'm getting that y is equal to 18. This means that the dimensions of 18 feet by 6 feet yield the smallest possible perimeter for our chicken coop. And here, 6 feet is that length that also matches the length of the divider. The divider is also that length of 6. Okay, so we have successfully found the smallest possible perimeter for our chicken coop given the constraints on area. Remember, we follow these same steps every time we do an optimization problem. The setup just might be a little different depending on the situation. So for our next example, let's say you want to purchase a shed for some extra storage and the quote you get for the shed estimates that the walls will cost $28 per foot. However, the wall with the door is more expensive and so it costs $56 per foot. If you want your shed to have an area of 216 square feet, find the dimensions that will minimize the cost of the shed. So we're gonna follow those same steps that we do anytime we're doing optimization. Our first step is always to draw a picture and choose some variables. So I'll draw a rectangle for my shed here I don't necessarily know if x is the longer length and y is the shorter one, but I will just label them anyway. And let's also put the door on the top part of the shed. So y is the length of the side that also has the door. We need to translate the situation into math. So I'm going to just start with the perimeter. The perimeter is 2y plus 2x, but we have more going on than just the perimeter. We have this cost issue. So we need to actually write an equation for the perimeter that corresponds with the cost of each side. So the side with the door costs $56 per foot, so that's 56 times y. You can imagine if the length of y was 10 feet, that wall would cost $560, so we do the length times the price. Then the other sides cost $28 per foot, so I will just do y times 28, that's for the side across from the door, and then 2x times 28 for the remaining sides. So if I label this as p for perimeter, I have p equals 56y plus 28y plus 56x, that's 2 times 28, just happens to be the same as the other price. Then I can combine like terms, and so I have p equals 84y plus 56x. So the other equation I need to consider is the area. My area needs to be 216 square feet, so x times y is equal to 216. Since we're trying to minimize the cost, the perimeter with the cost is our objective equation, and we're constrained by the specific amount of area we need, so that is our constraint equation. For the third step, we need to substitute the constraint into the objective. Remember, we're trying to take the derivative of the objective equation in order to find the critical numbers that correspond to the minimum, so we'd like to do this with only one variable. I'm going to solve for x this time, just to kind of show you that you can solve for x or y. So here, x is equal to 216 over y. I can substitute that into my perimeter, my objective. So I'm getting that 84y plus 12,096y to the negative 1 is my objective equation. Here, I just moved that y up to the numerator and made the exponent negative, since I know I'm going to need its derivative. OK, now we just need to apply the first derivative test to this objective equation that we have. So to do the derivative of p, I just need to use power rule. Derivative of 84y is 84. And on the second term, the negative 1 comes in front, and the exponent decreases to negative 2. Remember, we're going to now set this equal to 0, since we're trying to find the critical numbers. So I'm going to rewrite the negative exponent as a positive exponent in the denominator. And to get y by itself, let's move the 12,096 over y squared to the left-hand side. I'll multiply both sides by y squared. Then dividing both sides by 84, I'm getting that y squared is equal to 144. So y is equal to 12. And remember, we can't have a negative length on any of the sides because we need positive lengths for real world dimensions. So y is just positive 12. We don't need to worry about the negative 12 from the square root. OK, so to be really formal, you should do the first derivative test on that y equals 12. 
I'm not going to write that out here. You can choose points next to it, substitute them into the first derivative, and see that this is indeed the minimum. So y equals 12 gives us the minimum cost for the perimeter, and we just need the other dimension in order to finish the problem and really give the dimensions of the shed. So to solve for the other variable, I know that x is equal to 216 over y, so substituting in 12, I'm getting that x is 18. This means that the dimensions of 18 feet by 12 feet, where 12 feet is the door side of the shed, will minimize the cost. Awesome, and that is it. So, as I mentioned before, optimization problems can involve lots of different types of scenarios, but they always follow these same steps, and really I think it's nice to just look at some simple examples with rectangles and know that if we were given a more complicated example with different shapes or different scenarios, we could use these same steps to apply it to those types of problems. Okay, hopefully this helped you understand optimization problems a little better, and maybe you can start thinking about if there are things in your life that you can optimize using calculus. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the